I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You got space, man. Huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. Okay. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Well, 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 welcome to uh, Wrestle Rock Podcast. Uh, once again, uh, this is Jonathan, uh, your humble slave. So I am with my partner, Benoit, aka Nostrata Man. How are you doing, my friend? Fine, and you? Yes, very, very good, very good. Nice to see you again. Yes, yes, yes. And tonight, everyone, we have a special guest and uh, former WWE talent. Yeah. And uh, this is an honor and privilege uh, that he accepts the, um, this uh, interview with us. Uh, I believe that uh, we, uh, we we're gonna uh, do a really, 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 really good um, uh, times uh, with us. So I'm gonna introduce uh, yourself, Mister uh, Duke the Dumpster Rosie. How are hello, you, my hello. friend? Hey, thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah the, 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 this is an honor and privilege, honestly. I know that you are very busy with all your stuff. Uh, 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 we, we're going to talk about your uh, projects of uh, podcasts, and you uh, you have a uh, uh, busy with uh, wrestling con and stuff like that. So, Uh, we go forward uh, immediately with uh, some questions. So um, uh, we know that um, you have been trained by uh, Bobby Wales. Uh, can you talk uh, about uh, uh, this uh, this guy? Be because uh, uh, we don't know uh, who it is. Bobby Wales was uh, his wrestling name was the Jamaican Jammer. Bobby Wales. Uh, he wrestled some uh, in. The Caribbean and also in Florida for championship wrestling from Florida. A lot of times he was in a tag team with a guy named Tyree Pride, the Haitian sensation. Anyway, uh, when I was still in high school, I found out that he had a a, a wrestling school uh, near where I lived. And um, yeah. I went and checked it out and started practicing there. And, and uh, Bobby trained me. He was a very knowledgeable trainer he knew a lot uh, about wrestling and the wrestling business and, and how to work in a match and psychology um he was a very patient man because i was a young kid and very hyperactive and i wanted to learn everything really fast <laughs> and he calmed me down and, relaxed, <laughs> and but he was a great trainer man and i i brag about him every chance that i get because he is a great man he, he lives in jamaica now actually Okay. But uh, he also trained uh, Norman Smiley. Is it still alive? Is it still alive? Yes. yes. Yeah, cool. That, that's pretty cool. So uh, we say hi if you listen to uh, the video. Why not? <laughs> so uh, okay. when we post it, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Mr. Drozzi, can you talk about your sport background except pro wrestling? Um, I coming up through uh, high school, I played a little bit of football and then I wrestled in high school, amateur wrestling. Amateur wrestling. Um, and that's the main stuff that I really did. Uh, you know, when I was younger, I played a little football also. Uh, but I was always very active uh, out in the neighborhood. You know, we go out and play sports all the time in the neighborhood. And I was always in good shape and very fast. And, um, Coming out of high school wrestling, going right into professional wrestling made it very easy for me to learn how to become a professional wrestler, uh, just coming straight out of amateur wrestling because I I had very good balance and I moved very well and I was in very good shape. So it was a whole lot easier for me to, to learn. You're not the only because uh, many, many uh, wrestlers uh, made the amateur wrestling and football before a pro wrestling career. You're yes, yes, uh, and many of those guys went were were 
college champions and and even in Olympic champions. I wasn't anything like that. I was a high school wrestler, but uh, it definitely helped me prepare for professional wrestling. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, and um, in the independent wrestling circuit, uh, you wrestled uh, under the name of uh, Rocco uh, Gibraltar. Did you like the gimmick, or uh, I read some uh, something that you uh, you have another uh, name of um, uh, around your uh, current gimmick? So, uh, do you like your uh, gimmick? Do you like the, the the last gimmick, or? Well, when I was wrestling in Florida, uh, it's funny that name Rocco Gibraltar. Uh, when I was going to college in Miami, I was going to the University of Miami and then I was in a fraternity and one of my friends came up with this great name, Rocco Gibraltar, named after the Rock of Gibraltar. And um, I always thought it was a great name, so I kind of saved it. And then when I really started professional wrestling on a more uh, frequent basis, I wanted to use that name, but I also was looking ahead to wanting to work in the WWF. So... That's how I originally came up with the garbage man, Rocco Gibraltar in Florida. Okay. That's where I started the gimmick as the garbage man before I be, before I went to the WWF and they just changed the name to Duke the Dumpster. But I was wrestling the garbage man gimmick in Florida but before all of that as the garbage man, Rocco Gibraltar. Oh, that's okay. Good. That, that's pretty cool. Okay. How did you get uh, recruited by uh, WWE in the 90s? I did not get recruited. I um, I was, like I said, I was wrestling in Florida and I finished up going to college. I graduated from college and I was going to drive my car around the United States and try to find a job in wrestling. And wow. what ended up happening though is I made promotional packages with uh, promotional tapes and resume and pictures and And uh, before I went on this big road trip, before I got in my car and started driving, I was reading the newspaper one day and I, it said that Vince McMahon was locally in my town at a, at a okay. convention uh, okay. called the NATP convention. Uh, it's TV executive convention where TV stations and networks go to sell shows. And Vince McMahon was there. And so I had a friend that, was, that worked for a recent a television station locally there in Miami. And he gave me his, his, uh, credentials. Like I was a TV executive and I okay. walked in and walked right up to the WWF booth. Wow. And I walked right up to Vince McMahon. And I said, hello, Mr. McMahon. How are wow. you, sir? And I told I'll him I wanted to wrestle for him. Yeah. And I gave him the promotional package with the tape and the resume and everything. And, uh, I think he respected the fact that I, I was, uh, I just walked right up to him and I wasn't scared. Uh, uh, that's I, how I, had, I didn't know anybody that. that wrestled in the WWF then. I didn't have any friends or family up there, really. So okay. I had to take a chance, and okay. I did. And uh, they called me. J.J. Dillon was the head of talent relations then. He called me probably about a week later to bring me up for a tryout. Okay, so okay you made a tryout uh, yeah, with I mean, success? But uh, you, yes, you, you, need, uh, you need courage to, uh, to, to bring photos uh, Uh, VHS and and go to uh, to in front of the the chairman of WWE to say hey I'm available so that 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 that's a big rage I have a uh, I opened a little uh, parenthesis because I, I love this uh, <laughs> in uh, 2002 uh, we are in Quebec City uh, I, uh, as I said uh, to you uh, earlier and uh, we are uh, pro we uh, we wrestled. Uh, during uh about 12 years so and uh one time i uh i put some photos of my of myself with uh best of uh best of a little bit it's practically the same story but uh i'm going to uh the the, the ring of honor uh for for a, a tryout so i i wrote thir 13 hours uh honor road oh, there that 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 that's a that was a hot stories and I, uh, I and I arrived in front of uh, CM Punk because CM Punk was the uh, the booker the, was the uh, the whole booker of the and I choked him out and I, and I turned around and I fuck I, I don't know why but 
<laughs> that, 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 that's probably a, a stupid thing, but uh, it, in, my, in my mind, in my heart, something said, don't go there for, for some reason, but you have a good courage and uh, I thumbs up uh, what you did and you, you yeah, are. I, just, I, didn't, I, I did it really fast. Yeah, I didn't give myself time to think. If I would have thought about it too much, I would have probably gotten scared and stopped and, and turned around. Mm -hmm. And, and, yeah. and walked out, but uh, I just I just didn't give myself a chance to even think. I just went right to it. Yeah, and uh, you know it worked out. I was, I was lucky. It worked out well. Yeah, that that, that that's very cool. Go ahead. Okay, uh, can I ask you uh, a funny question? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, you received the Slammy Award in 1994 for the smelliest person <laughs> of the WWE roster, tied with Henry Godwins. <laughs> What was your reaction when you knew that would receive this funny award? <laughs> okay, so here's the story with that. Uh, I think that's a bit of what they call the Mandela effect going on because I never got a Slammy Award. But somehow, through history, somebody... I don't know if they made up that story or what, but um, it became true all of a sudden. But it's not. I never won a Slammy. Uh, and I don't even think Henry Godwin was there in 1994, was he? He came like in 95, I thought. But, uh, yeah, that I never won a Slammy. Um, I did an intro for Slammys um, where I did the impersonation of the wrestlers and stuff, but that was in 96, I think. That was in 1996, yeah. but um, no, I didn't actually win a, a, a Slammy Award that year. So that's the truth. <laughs> oh, okay. I believe you. We believe you. Yes. <laughs> I would have been happy to win a Slammy Award. <laughs> Dream I would have your, carried uh, it around just like Owen did for like two yeah, years. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, uh, you can do the, the same thing. So um, during your um, WWE days, uh, what year did you prefer? So. Uh, 1994, 1995, or 1996, and why? And why? Uh, you know, it was a tough time in the, in the WWF or in the wrestling business in general mm -hmm. during all of those years. It was a mm -hmm. tough time. Uh, yeah, because it did. There was, there was a horrible the story era. behind uh, all of this. Uh, this But, you know, in '96, you could tell the business was starting to pick up again. So I would say '96 because there, there was a whole lot more going on. But I will say in 94, I was wrestling a lot more. So, but um, you could tell something was about to happen. And um, you could tell Stone Cold Steve Austin was going to be something special, mm -hmm. even in 95, 96, when he first came in. So um, I, I, it was a fun time, I, even though we weren't making a lot of money. It was, it was a fun time to be there and wrestle during those years. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so uh, in the World Wrestling Federation, you have interpreted a dumpster. Uh, who was behind the gimmick? A dumpster guy? Who was the, the gimmick? Uh, behind the gimmick? Um, now, again, I was wrestling in Florida already as the gimmick. It was, yeah. the, it was the garbage man, Rocco Gibraltar. But when I went up to the WWF, um, they flew me up to Stanford, Connecticut to do vignettes. You know, like, hey, this is Duke the Dumpster coming soon. And Shane McMahon produced my vignettes. Shane McMahon was working in the studio at that time. Mm -hmm. and he uh, sat me down and he told me my name was going to be Duke the Dumpster Drossy. Uh, but the gimmick was the same. It was the garbage man gimmick. I was still doing that. Okay. But um, they just changed the name so they could own the licensing, you know. Yeah. Uh, but Shane I McMahon was right. the one who yeah. was the creative mind behind a lot of those vignettes. Because at that time, Shane McMahon was working his way through all the different parts of the company. And when I got there, luckily enough, he was working in the studio. So I got to work with him. On He was he was the one producing all my my vignettes when I came in. Okay, the, the same gimmick, but not the same name. Yeah. Not the same it's, name. Same like, gimmick. Like yeah. Nizel in WCW, uh, he was named uh, Kevin Nash. That His name was Kevin Nash in WCW. But in WWE, uh, it was a uh, diesel. Well, but yeah, they changed the diesel. Because, but, but, <laughs> yeah, uh, Vince liked to have these. It, it was see that was the thing about it is is it was just a different time and it was the end of that era. That era where it was like kind of goofy characters, almost like comic book characters, cartoonish characters. Yeah, like a garbage man or a diesel or a or a or a, a hog farmer or a dentist. Medium, you know, so yeah, many exactly. different things. But it was. 
it was slowly winding down and it was getting ready to change. You could tell it was going to change because people were starting to know more and more. Fans were knowing more about the business. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't, you know, in insult their intelligence anymore. You had to be more real. And that's why the characters got more real after that. And they started using people's reels and real names and things like that. But yeah, during the Duke the Dumpster era with the Godwins and all that good stuff, it was kind of goofy. That was story. insane, honestly, because uh, uh, two hours ago, uh, we watched a lot of uh, of your wrestling match, and we don't understand why the, the, the gimmick uh, as, was, not as over. was over, because uh, you add charisma... You have a uh, really good uh, technical uh, wrestling. Uh, the, shape, the shape, the shape was there. Uh, the um, the attraction between the you and fans was great. So you were popular uh, with that. Yeah, gimmick. yeah, and uh, after all the this. Um, Uh, we said uh, we 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 started uh, we we started uh, this uh, this thing, and we believe that uh, Vince McMahon is not uh, necessarily uh, that's my opinion not necessarily a good uh, management manager for and for 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 that because uh, honestly I. I I believe Sometimes that. Sometimes it seems like he doesn't make good decisions. Um, yeah, he couldn't don't necessarily, and he is an, an emotional guy, and I believe that he takes decision with emotion, and that that is not uh, really good for uh, for business. But that's my opinion. There's truth to that, and also I think as a promoter, a wrestling promoter. A lot of times what Vince McMahon would do and still does to this day is he would make snap decisions. He would yeah. see one thing that he did like or one thing that he didn't like, and that could make yeah. or break you. And mm -hmm. if he didn't like something, all of a sudden you were thrown to the bottom and uh, you had to start crawling your way back up to the top. And that's a position I found myself in because when it wasn't just Vince McMahon, there was other people mm -hmm. that – You know, are involved backstage like the Pat Pattersons and the JRs and the yeah. And, and, it, the, and if you are Briscoe not with the right people. click, uh, this is a politic business. And if you are not on the, with, and if you are not with the right person, and you don't talk with the right person, uh, that was not easy. So. And yeah, and like I said, when I came in, I didn't have any yeah. friends or family. I got myself in there. So when yeah. I kind of came in, I was kind of by myself. Kid. So, yeah. and I really didn't care much about politics, but I probably should have cared more about it, but you know, it is what it is, but I had a good time when I was there. I had fun and you know, my career was what it was, but uh, it was all good. Okay. Mr. Drozzi, uh, in your wrestling career, uh, who has been your toughest opponent? <laughs> uh, we, 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 we believe that uh, the, uh, we, we know practically the, 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 answer. the answer, but, uh, Go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, it depends on how you're asking that question. If you mean like really tough, like hard to wrestle, like a King Kong Bundy, probably. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> that was he was horrible. He was just terrible. He and I loved I loved Chris to death. You know, we had a love hate relationship, and he is no longer with us. He passed away a couple years ago, but three years um, ago, he was just rough in the ring. He was yeah. rough. Everything hurt. Everything he did to you hurt in the ring. So, but um, toughest in terms of like, uh, you know, I, Triple H was a great match. He was not tough to work with. He was fun to work with. Um, Jerry the King Lawler was fun to work with. Um, Pierre now PCO. Yeah, he was yeah. tough to work with in that you knew if you were going to wrestle Pierre, you were going to work. And we worked, we used to work our asses off. And we had great matches because of it. Because you knew if you mm -hmm. were in a match with Pierre, back then he was the Quebecer, and then yeah. he was Jean-Pierre Lafitte. Yeah. If you wrestled with Pierre, you were going to work, but you were going to have a hell of a match. And uh, in that respect, you had to be in shape to work with him. And um, I always enjoyed wrestling him. 
and you wrestle again uh the men they called Vader. So oh, uh, that was not easy. It's like yeah. King Kong Bundy, man. You're just taking a beating. God damn man. And uh yeah, when you talk about um King Kong Bundy, I have a, a true story about that. So we have a, a French Canadian uh called uh Little Beaver and uh in WrestleMania, yeah, WrestleMania too, the, the midget, uh, Little Beaver. Yeah, I remember well. Bundy uh, hurt him uh, for real with a elbow drop. Yes, with the, the elbow drop on the uh, on the sternum. And, uh, I know, I believe it. I mean, I heard uh, that story. Yeah, some, uh, and it's true. Some uh, complication after this uh, this elbow drop, and uh, the guy is passed away right now. But no, 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 no in 1995. 95? Okay. Okay, but okay. many many uh, trouble with this heel. Okay, okay, okay. But, but uh, yeah, that is probably the cause because <laughs> when you uh, you have a four hundred pounds and you did a elbow drop on the midget, mm, that is not a. Yeah, but look, man, uh, there's a difference. Let me tell you. Look, let, let's say okay, for me, it was King Kong Bundy was very heavy. He did not control his body very well, so he would land on you and it hurt just like Little Beaver. Now take a Bam Bam Bigelow. If he drops an elbow on you, you're not even going to feel it because he was yeah. that good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't get along with Bam Bam Bigelow either, but he was a great wrestler. He was a great uh, wrestler for being such a big guy. And oh, yes. uh, he was yeah, very he careful was in the ring. Okay. He did not hurt you. But Bundy was not careful. Yeah. Bundy would drop elbows. Bundy dropped a knee on my nose, and I swear it almost broke oh, my nose. Oh, shit. It broke it hurt so bad. And that one was on TV, and I believe it's still on YouTube somewhere, me versus King Kong. But you can see he drops a knee on it, and I put my hand up, and I start cussing at him. I go, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> he said, he, was just, he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't say anything. But oh, it was rough. But, yeah. um, you know, you had different types of people you worked with, so. Yeah, and uh, why uh, is uh, your wrestling career in the WWE is over right now? So, you know, it was a, it was a combination of things. Um, you know, I got some injuries while I was there, okay. and, and started taking painkillers and stuff. And I started taking mm -hmm. too many, you know, painkillers and drugs and stuff like that. And okay. because of that, my mind wasn't right. So okay. I was always very, and it got when it got to the point where I wasn't wrestling as much, they weren't putting me on TV. I wasn't doing as many house shows. So I wasn't making as much money. Then I got angry and I used to complain a lot to Vince McMahon. And one day I think he just got sick of it. And he just told me I could go ahead on home. And, you know, I regretted that for a long time, but you know, it was what it was, but uh, you know, I took a beating physically and mentally from the business and uh that that was probably the biggest reason why i ended up leaving when i okay, did okay but uh that that's probably the, the 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 biggest reason for many other because in this uh area in in uh, that was not easy my friend that uh you are 300 days uh, on, the years on the road and yeah. you are always in the airport and yeah. you sleep uh, when you can, and you have a lot of hurt and problems, and you need yeah. uh, taking uh, uh, pills, uh, pills and stuff like yeah. that. So that's that, how it was. It was just you, a lot of for the body. Yeah, yeah it was, addiction is it's it happened a lot. It happened to a lot of guys, and a lot of guys died. A lot of guys didn't survive mm -hmm. it. I'm very fortunate mm -hmm. that I'm still alive. And the wrestler, yeah, yeah. And the wrestlers died died before uh, 40 years old. Yes, a lot, a lot of them. So I'm I think about you to get rid of that yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. And if we talk about a little bit about steroids, roids, uh, we uh, we spoke a couple of years ago uh, with uh, another. Uh, old timer uh, in uh, in Quebec and then he, he he took uh roids uh many roids and he he uh, he mentioned me that um animal and hawks the legion of doom takes practically uh five times uh uh of sickle that he 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 uh, he heat uh, uh well, what did yeah. he take what he took well, what he takes and what he took exactly so uh yeah, yeah that, that, I mean, that, 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 that's why you see a lot of these guys dying with heart problems in their 50s and 60s now. It's they, they when you do a lot of steroids, you know, 
and you abuse them for a long period of time, it does things to your heart and enlarges your heart. And yeah. uh, th that sets you up to have heart attacks in early yeah. life. Now, we weren't doing steroids when I was in the WWF because they were drug testing for that. Uh, yeah, you could not take steroids because Vince was in the steroid trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The federal trial. There's a lot but still, of I've done them. I've abused them in my career, too. And I'm having heart issues now, but uh, I'm trying to take care of myself now. I, I feel like I'm trying to get as healthy as I can and make sure none of that stuff, hopefully, knock on wood, that I don't <laughs> die at an early age. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm almost 54 now. So, um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of lessons learned, but uh, a lot of us were crazy back in the day. And I'm sure the Road Warriors did their fair share. They were, they were my idols when I was coming up in uh, wrestling. That's who I wanted to be like, just like uh, the Road Warriors. I never got to meet Hawk, but I got to meet Joe a couple of years ago before okay. he passed away. And uh, he was mm -hmm. such a nice guy. But yeah, you know, a lot of guys did that stuff. It was just, we didn't think about the future. We just now, whatever, whatever we got to do to be successful now when we were in wrestling. <laughs> and yeah. uh, that's some guy, a lot of guys paid the price for it. They're mm -hmm. no longer here with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In 1995, you had a uh, feud against uh, uh, the a current uh, WWE official. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Triple H. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was your relationship with Triple H and the WWE? I mean, I got along fine with Triple H. Um, you know, he was in the clique, so he was oh, yeah. protected. And uh, mm -hmm. even back then, he was, okay. you know, before Stephanie or any of that. Um, but, yeah, we started wrestling in 95, end of 95, in the beginning of 96. We wrestled, and um, he was always a joy to work with, man. Uh, Triple H, he was willing to do anything, and he... He took a beating when he wrestled me because I threw him all over the place because that was my style. I was a brawler and, mm -hmm. you know, he took, I pressed him and threw him and everything. And he never complained. He was always willing to do whatever it took to have a great match. Okay. And he was a great wrestler. I enjoyed wrestling him. Uh, thank you. And uh, can you talk about uh, your uh, podcast projects called Real Talk with the Trash Man? Yes, actually, and and I'll tell you what the actual name is. It's it's called Trash Cam Live, um, Trash Cam Live, and then it's and the moniker is Real Talk with the Trash Man. Um, Trash Cam Live is just a live. I, I do a live podcast on Saturdays. It's on my Facebook page, which is Mike Drosy. It's also on YouTube, which is Duke the Dumpster Official. Um, it's even on Twitch, which is on Trash Cam Live on Twitch. Um, yeah, I got a lot of different names for my social media. I don't know why I did that. But but um, it, it came, the name of it came from when I was in the WWF. At one point, they had me walk around with a camcorder, with a, a camera. And they called it the Trash Cam. And everything, I would film stuff backstage. And they called it trash the Trash Cam. And they would show they showed it on a couple of weekends worth of shows, you know, and uh, it started doing really well. And then one day they didn't bring me the camera anymore. And then the next thing I see, Shawn Michaels is taking the camera out to the ring and they called it the click cam from that point. <laughs> and he taped the crowd and they called it the click cam. No more trash cam. Now it's the click cam. So it got over and they gave it to him. But um that's where it came from. And it's a great show. I, the podcast is great, man. We have fun. I talk a lot of, I talk wrestling. I talk current events. We, we watch some funny stuff from videos from TikTok. Um, I even talk a little bit of recovery. I'm in recovery. I was, I was telling you before about the drugs and everything. And okay. I help my job now. I help people that are, that are trying to get off of drugs. And okay. uh, I work for a drug court here in Tennessee where I live. And uh, I talk about that, too, you know, uh, problems people may be having and they can always talk. It's interactive. The fans can talk to me while I'm doing it. It is live. So Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the United States. If you come on my Facebook page, Mike Drosy, or again, YouTube, Duke the Dumpster Official, you can see it or Twitch, Trash Cam Live. Okay. Uh, in your wrestling career, career, you wrestled in the World Wrestling Council in Puerto Rico uh, territory. What was your experience right there? Uh, you know, I always liked working in Puerto Rico. It was it was an interesting thing. Um, you know, again, during those years, that was that was right 
at the end of my WWF career and uh, shortly after I, I went down to Puerto Rico a few times. When I wrestled in the WWC, though, for Carlos Colon, I was still wrestling in the WWF. So they guaranteed that I would make my money. Now, if, when you go down there and you're not with like Vince McMahon or anything, they could, I've heard stories that they could uh, stiff you for your money and you wouldn't get paid. But they were always good to me. I always got paid. I never had a problem and uh, I enjoyed wrestling. Um, you know, we got to work on shows with Savio and stuff. He did shows down there later where he brought some of us guys in and, um, but it was always fun. It was always fun. I, I got to have a, you know, they, they allowed me to be more myself, you know, WWF, sometimes they kind of change you. They, they restrict you and they say, no, don't do this. Don't do this. Man, I went to Puerto Rico. They were like, do whatever. Cause the crowd was like, ah, dang. So it was always fun, and I enjoyed yeah. wrestling with all those guys down in Puerto Rico. And I always say that the, the same thing when a uh, guy is going to the w, uh, WWC. WWC, you need big balls to go uh, in Puerto Rico because there is a lot of story behind all of this, such as... Uh, He's talking death. about the Bruiser Brody's death. The, the yeah. invader, yeah, yeah. There was yeah. all of that stuff. Everybody... I mean, I never really worried about that stuff, but I mean, it was always there. Yes, you always thought about it. Uh, and during those years, this wasn't too long after Bruiser Brody got killed and not a lot of Americans were going down there. Not a lot of uh, people from the States, you know, mm -hmm. the uh, mainland United States were going down to Puerto Rico at that time because of that, you know, and other things. So. It was always there, but I never worried about that because I always got along. I tried to get along with everybody. I, I you know, and I never met that invader guy and I really had no interest in meeting him anyway. Okay. Um, but it's obvious that he killed Bruiser Brody. And that's, that's, that was a major loss to the wrestling business. And I've had the opportunity mm -hmm. to meet his widow, his wife, and she's a very nice person as well. Okay. So, um, Yeah, and I always liked watching Bruiser Brody because, like I said, man, when I was coming up as a wrestler, I, I was a brawler, and I, he was the ultimate brawler. He, you know, <laughs> he would beat you yeah, up. He is probably really an inspiration for Brody you uh, to, to become For many wrestlers. A, yes, to become a pro wrestler. It's probably, yep. uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you think that uh, one day uh, you could be inducted uh, to the WWE Hall of Fame? No, probably not. <laughs> I would love to, but yeah. you know, realistically, I was only there about two and a half years. Um, I came back for that little short WrestleMania gimmick battle royal thing. Yeah, I remember that, and that was yeah, very, yeah. very interesting. Uh, Houston Astrodome, yeah. I remember. Oh yeah, it was a huge crowd too. Sixty-five oh, yeah, thousand. Five thousand people, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's that was, that, was, uh, that was amazing. Uh, a very good idea if he uh, he did uh, another gimmick battle royal in the future. And that, that will be very interesting in WrestleMania. Now, uh, yeah. uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal yeah, is yeah. not a gimmick battle royal, yeah, yeah, but it's to honor yeah, uh, the late Andre my the Giant. That's battle royal, uh, the gimmick battle royal. Well, my, rest, my wrestling days are over now, but I, at one, I've got a prosthetic leg. My left foot, I lost my left foot in 2018, okay. so I have, a, I have a fake foot, a fake leg. It's a prosthetic. Uh, God damn. So um, I've... I'm not going to be wrestling thank, anymore. Thank God you live. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but, um, you know, as far as the, the Hall of Fame, maybe one day if they add a, uh, a gimmick section, a gimmick wing to the battle, uh, to the uh, Hall of Fame, like if they start inducting all like crazy gimmicks like Duke the Dumpster and TL Hopper in, and in wheelchair in, in Henry <laughs> God, well, then, then, okay, then I can have, then I can have a spot. Yeah, I remember a spot with I remember a spot with Big Daddy Cole Diesel and Mad Dog Vachon <laughs> during a match. He drew. I he, remember uh, that. He, yes, he, he took his he leg off and Mad Dog Vachon uh, by 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 his neck and uh, 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 grabbed the uh, the fake legs and uh, Diesel uh, uh, hurt him. <laughs> I remember <laughs> uh, that. A funny story, but. Not, not for Mad Dog Vachon. <laughs> I always called that the Mad Dog Vachon spot. So well, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Historic. <laughs> It was historic. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have an interesting story that you have never told before? 
<laughs> um, I've told a lot of stories. Um, <clears throat> man, I've told a lot of stories. It's hard to think of any new ones. I've told so many. But, but you um, can go with uh, whatever, Lou, whatever uh, you want. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff that would happen on the road. But, um, you know, Owen Hart was always funny. He was just always a funny guy. And I remember he would always rib and, and joke, practical jokes. And uh, one time they were telling us the story. We were all at the building and they came walking in. And Hakushi, you remember Hakushi, the Japanese yeah. wrestler? Musician Zeki. Yeah. He came, he came in and he had this look, his, his eye, the look on his face, like he, gonna, he was just, he was afraid because he was riding in the rental car with Owen Hart and one of the announcers back then it was Manny Diaz. His name was an announcer and they pulled over and picked up a homeless man on the street and let him sit in the back seat next to Hakushi and Hakushi didn't know, you know, Owen did it as a joke. And what Owen did is this guy apparently smelled like really bad. He was a homeless guy. He smelled bad. And Owen rolled up all the windows and locked all the doors. And he turned the heater on in the car in the middle of summer. So it was really, really hot. And it really smelled bad. And Akushi was just hiding. And he videoed <laughs> somewhere. I'm sure there still exists a videotape of that event. They videotaped. They were ribbing poor Hakushi. He sat in the back seat. He was just, he was, he was just beaten. He was, he was so scared. He didn't know what was going on. But that's the kind of stuff Owen would do, man. He would just goof around and make you mad. Especially like you said, we've been on the road 300 days and everybody's tired, mad, and pissed off. And here's Owen pulling jokes. So that was always a fun part of, of the business. Owen was a, a very funny guy and really good person. Okay. Uh, uh, th thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Drozzi. Uh, it was uh, an honor and a pleasure to uh, speak with you. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you so much for uh, for accepting our invitation uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, interview with you. It's an honor. Almost 40 minutes uh, yeah. interview. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, for being here. So. Um, This is Jonathan from uh, Wrestle Rock Podcast. I was with my uh, partner Benoit, aka Nostrada Ben. So uh, this is a classic. Uh, just at the end of the um, of our, uh, you can uh, you can uh, how we say? Um, uh, voyons, prédire, uh, pr predict. I yes, predict. Uh, yes, you can predict the results of the match or yeah, uh, the, yeah, yeah. the pay per view. Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, the, the story behind the the, the name of uh, Nastradamus Ben, he predicts uh -huh. uh, the, the future. Yeah. yeah. I try to predict the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, good. He, he can predict your future. So go ahead, my friend. Uh oh, that's a scary thought. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe. Uh, Oh shit! Ah, uh, oh, Colin. <laughs> the good hill. It's, it's pronounced good hill. Hall yeah. of Fame. You can say it, Hall of Fame. You can Hall say it, fame. Hall of Fame. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the most important thing is the hill. T we. Uh, it's better than one million because ah uh, yeah exactly with the LT we can do everything. So, thank you so much, my friend. No problem, guys. Thank you very much for having me on your show. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.